Welcome to part two of the Confluence 101 series, where I show you how to make the most out of Confluence, all from the very start of your experience. In this episode, I'm going to show you how to format pages and create more beautiful and more useful pages for your team. And we're going to get started by creating a focal point for your Confluence space, the homepage. So let's dig in. So we're back in our Vita fleet site where we have our nice page structure here for our meeting notes and our retrospectives. And now what I'd like to do is actually customize this home page to make it a little bit more useful for our team. So what I'm going to do is pop up to the edit button here, but I could also press the E key on my keyboard. As you can see, this will take us to the edit mode. And by default, Confluence adds a bunch of stuff here to help us get started. But let's clear this and we'll start from scratch. So the first thing you should notice is the Confluence editor has two separate ways of showing this page. One is the default, which is a limited width page. So if I add a macro here, you'll see that it will only take up some of the page width here. So let's add a table here. You can see this takes up only some of the page width. Now th there's two ways to change this. One is to change the width of the entire page, which will make the entire page wider. So you can see if we now add a table, it takes up the full width of the page. But the other way, if you don't want the entire page to be the full width, is to just make specific elements the full width. So for that, you can use this drag box on a certain macros to create, make them bigger. <laughs> so that's the first kind of thing you need to learn is about the width of the page. And depending on what content you're writing, if it's text based content, I'd suggest the thin width. If you're putting more detail in and tables, especially, then you may want to use the full width option. There are also a few options at the top here. We can change the alignment of the title so we could have a left aligned or centered we can add a header image so as you can see we can add a nice kind of header image here if we'd like in this case i don't want one so the first thing i'm going to show you is to add headings to the page let's see let's add a categories title so what i can do is select that go up to here and change the style of that to be heading two. And then I could add another title here and also set that to heading two. And you'll see here, there's little kind of shortcuts for how you can do this. So this is command option for me, but if you're on windows, it will be different. And that means that what I can do is change the style without having to interact with the heading bar there. And you can do this similarly with lots of different types like quotes, headings, and text. We can also change the format of the text. For example, using command B here, I can make it bold. If I want to make it italic, I can use the standard kind of shortcuts that you get on Word, for example. And up here, you can see we can also underline or strike through text here, or even change the color of that text. So. We have a lot of power with Confluence to make our pages exactly how we'd like them. One of the most useful features that you should learn straight off the bat is the slash menu. So you'll see up here, we can add things like images, mentions, layouts, tables, and other elements from this menu. But if we have to use that every time, it's not going to be particularly efficient. So the slash menu gives you really quick access to everything. So if you type slash table, we can insert table. If we did slash layout, we can add two, three, four, and five column layouts here. And this one in particular, the layout macro is going to be super helpful when you're organizing things. So for our purposes here, we'd like to have two columns. And in fact, we would like to have multiple of them. So what I can do, there's a little drag handle here, which lets us move this element around the page really easily. But I can also click it, copy and paste. So now we have multiple layouts here. So 
in this case, what I'd like to do is have my meeting notes, my, the most recent meeting notes there. I'd to have the most recent retrospectives on the right. And then similarly, we could have sections for RSCs. And we've still got space here for something else if we wanted to. So what we can do is now that we've got our two column layout, we can then put child pages macros in here. And we can set the parent item here. So in this case, obviously, this is going to be the meeting notes. And then on the right here, we're going to do the same with the retrospectives. And the RFCs. And what this is going to give us is a dynamically updating list of pages here. So as we add meeting notes or we add retrospectives, we're going to see that data gets automatically updated. So this provides us with a really nice way of organizing our stuff and really guiding our staff through what they can do. So we might want to add some more information. And obviously I don't want this to be a heading. And for now, we're going to keep things simple and we're just going to use it like this. And what I'd like to do is add another meeting notes here so that we can just show you this live updating. So as from the previous episode, I'm going to go onto my meeting notes page and click create. And let's put this to the third. and rearrange that and as you can see our meeting notes now they've just suddenly appeared and now whenever an employee goes on to our vita fleet space they'll be presented with a nice summary of all of the pages that we care about here next let's look at some of the more advanced features of confluence like tables and show you how you can use these along with mentions dates and more so for this I've got a simple blank page here, and we're going to add a table to it. So we're going to type slash table, and then we have our table here, and we can easily delete columns. We can change the it from having a header row to having a header column. And a really common thing you're going to see in these pages is at the top having a metadata section. So in here, I might want to have, this is an RFC. So I might want to have an assignee, collaborators, and reviewers. And in here, what I can do is I can use the app symbol to add people from my site. So I think I only have myself here, so I'm, I don't have other users, but you can see we can easily add more users here. And those users will be notified when I add them to this page. The other thing that we can add here is timestamps. So we could say, when did this start? When will it close? And in here, if you type slash three times, so one, two, three, you can see it pops up straight away with the date. So what we can do, press enter, and now we can add a date in here. And similarly on the close date, I'm going to mark this as a month long RFC. The other thing we can do is use the status lozenge. So if we type slash status in here, we can add like the current status of it. So we could say this is in progress. And with the table, we actually have these ability to drag and drop rows around. So we could actually put this say at the top, we'd prefer it to be there. And I'd like the assignee to be there. Really quick tip to use the table like this. Really handy to lay out basic information. So there we've showed dimensions, the dates, and also the status lozenge there. But what else can we do? So 
we might have a kind of summary section here. We might have a tasks list, let's say. And in here, we might put a table for kind of tracking what's going on at each time. So we could say, for this, I'd like to have a numbered column. I'd like to have the task name. I'd like to know who is going to be doing the work and when. And this nicely segues us on to another nice feature, which is the task macro. So what we can do is if we use the square brackets here and we open and close a square bracket and then press space, you'll see this adds a checklist button there. So what this means is as we go along, our staff can actually click on that tick button and we can mark things off as complete as we go along. So we could say, stop reset. We could set who is doing that work. And we could also say what time it's happening. And we could keep going with this to really quickly lay out to people like a run book. This is what we're going to be doing. So just going to add a few items here. In reality, I suspect this would be much longer list and you'd probably want to put additional details in here. So as you can see, like we can really nicely lay out both metadata at the top of the page, but also we can create nice task tables here as well. And as our users go along these tasks, they can click on these ticks and this will be saved throughout. So if I reload the page, you'll see that it stores the status of that checkbox there. So we can make really nice pages like that. So this one was short and sweet, but you've seen how to correctly format pages in Confluence, how to embed dynamically rendering information in the page. And also the different options around formatting the header, the icons, etc., for the pages. So join me in part three, where we'll look at some even more advanced features and other things we can do with Confluence.